Welcome back to the tutorial in Intensive English. My name is Katie and I am an instructor here. This is Intermediate Module 6 and today's pronunciation module is all about sentence stress in English. Now this is part one because this is a complex topic. So we're going to take three modules to talk about it. In today's module, we're going to review content and function words as well as basic stress, and then we're going to introduce sentence level stress. Okay, a review of content and function words quickly before we begin. We remember that content words are those words that have a lot of meaning inside of them already, just Think of them as words that might create a picture in your mind. Like if I said the word phone, you would probably picture a cell phone, much like that phone. So they have a lot of meaning inside of them already. They are categories of words like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and some adverbs. Uh, while function words are really grammatical words they don't carry a lot of meaning inside of them outside of their grammatical job that they do. They do an important job. They connect all the words together in the right place, in the right order, so that sentences make sense. But they're not words that are gonna create a lot of pictures in your mind when you, when you say them. And I have some examples, articles, prepositions, pronouns, and auxiliary verbs. Now, this is a pretty quick review and I don't list all the different types of content and function words. So if you want more information, check out module five for more detailed explanation. Okay, let's take a quick uh, review of word stress as well. If you remember from module two, we talked about word stress and how Words have syllables, right? And syllables are like the beats in the word. And syllables can have three types of stress. They could have a primary stress, a secondary stress, or they could be reduced completely. Now, every word is gonna have a syllable that has a primary stress. And if we remember, that means that that syllable is the loudest syllable. It has the longest vowel sound in the word, and that vowel sound is said at the highest pitch within the word. Now, all the other, uh, now a word could have secondary stress, could. Not all words have a secondary stressed syllable. Really depends on the length. The longer the word is, the more likely it could have a secondary stress. Like if two syllable words, you probably, you're not gonna have a primary and a secondary. And then all the other syllables are reduced. And this alternation of stressed and unstressed syllables creates our English rhythm, the music. Okay, so that's our word stress. So what is second, uh, what is sentence stress? All right, so sentence stress just builds on word stress. You know, word stress, not all syllables are stressed equally. With sentence level stress, not all words in a sentence are stressed equally. Now, the rule, it's not a rule, it's a generalization. The general idea is that content words are the stressed words in a sentence. But I remind you that this is not actually a rule that we can count on all the time to be true. So think of it as a guideline. And then that means that all the function words tend to be not stressed. Now, stress is something that we can manipulate and change a lot depending on our intended meaning. So that's another thing to remember. It is pretty flexible. The first step though is noticing our pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables. That's the most important is that English has this pattern of stressed and unstressed. So let's talk a little bit more about rhythm in English. In English, we don't wanna say each syllable fully. We don't wanna say each word fully and clearly. 
and you're like, what? That's crazy. That seems strange. Uh, but the problem is if we say each word, uh, each syllable clearly and fully, we're not going to get the rhythm of English. Now, English does have a regular rhythm, which you may be kind of questioning right now because I just told you like some syllables are stressed, some syllables aren't stressed. Sounds kind of random, doesn't it? But this stressing and de-stressing happens in a regular pattern. And that is really important. So we stress, we de-stress. The de-stress syllables are actually just as important to the rhythm as the stress syllables because without them, we don't get that rhythm. We don't get that alternation of stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, unstressed, stressed. So it's all important, even though we don't stress at all. <laughs> don't stress out. So if you're feeling confused, let's look at some examples to help us understand. Okay. <clears throat> Notice I have a delicious cake here. This is going to be our example. People bake cakes. Thank goodness that they do because I love cake. So here I have three content words, right? People, noun, bake, verb, cakes, noun. Three content words, four syllables because people has two syllables, people. Three stress syllables though. People bake cakes. I can tap it out. People bake cakes. It's always good to feel the rhythm. People bake cakes. Okay, so what happens if I add a function word to my sentence, the? So I've added a beat, right? I've added a beat, but since it's a function word, it's not stressed. So I still have three content words. I now have five syllables total, but still only three syllables are stressed. So the time that it takes me to say this sentence hasn't changed much. I still have three beats. The people take cakes. The people make cakes. So the is really reduced. The, the the people, the people. What if I add another function word? So now I have three content words still, that hasn't changed, but I have now six syllables, but still only three of those are stressed. So the time is still three beats. The people bake the cakes, the people bake the cakes, the cakes, the cakes, the, the cakes. You can feel that pitch increase, increase, the cakes. Now, my most complicated example, I've added two more beats. So now I have three content words, but eight total syllables, but still only three of those syllables are uh, stressed. So let's try this. The people will have baked the cakes. The people will have baked the cakes. The people will have baked the cakes. Now, if I go into the middle of that sentence and I focus on will have, I don't say will have baked. I say will have, will have baked, will have baked. And my pitch, volume, and vowel length increases on that stressed syllable. The people will have baked the cakes. So those most important words, people baked cakes, those are the words that I'm gonna hear and they're the most important words in that sentence for me to understand what it's about. Okay, that's all for today. This was an introduction. So the main thing to understand is that sentence stress is a lot like word stress. Some words are stressed, some words aren't. Content words are usually the stressed words. Function words are usually reduced and this creates the rhythm, okay? This tells us how long it's gonna take to say something in English, how many beats there are that are stressed. 
So next time we're going to get a little deeper into this, we're going to just basically build on this. We're just going to look at some more complicated examples next time. So I'll see you then. Keep practicing.